It's a beautiful day in Texas. You'd never know a week ago it was five degrees out. We're on the road today. We're going to go visit my old friend Matt Carricker of Off the Ranch. And we're going to go see how the abandoned mansion is faring. We haven't seen it in a while. I'm curious how Matt fared through the freeze. We're also going to check on his status of freeze protection in the future and see what's happening in his house. Wow, lots happened. Let's get going. Matthew, the house is looking good. Thanks, man. Appreciate I, it. I like it, dude. A lot has happened since I was here last. Mm -hmm. Like this whole wing was a hole in the ground. That wasn't was there before. Last. And all the rock, the roof. That's all pretty much our newest stuff is the rock and the roof. I love the rock, man. It's kind of reminds me of Fredericksburg, kind of that German immigrant schmear that you see all through Fredericksburg. Very uh, hill country styled. The other thing I really like, Matt, is I still remember vividly standing out here with that terrible parapet on the front here and that ugly parapet that had been stuccoed that I knew was going to be a massive problem. You didn't like that? <laughs> now, here's the deal. Do you not like it because the way it looks or because you know all the problems that comes with it? The problems. Okay. I know it gets done figured. wrong 90% of the time. Yeah. I've done plenty of parapets, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm but I also charge my clients appropriately for all the stuff that needs to be perfect behind right. that. Exactly. The other thing I'm noticing, Matt, uh, is you've got great overhangs everywhere. It looks like a two foot overhang pretty much as far as the eye can see. Everything has overhangs, yeah. Including like this turn gable here has a, uh, an additional um, kind of awning style. And on your garage addition here, you've got a turn right there. So you've got an awning on those upper windows and on your garage. Yeah, and originally that was not there. It wasn't on our plans, but once we put it all up, we were like, it needs something there I for looks, it. but also it's going to be functional to keep water off of those windows yes. and yes, keep the Matty. sun out. Oh, I love it. You're talking my language. Did you hear that? Water. It's keeping the water off. And also look at the shade too. It's acting just like your hat today. Yep. That brim is giving you some shade on those windows because even the best window when the sun pounds through that window is gonna heat up the house. So in Texas, having a little bit of shade on some of those, uh, especially windows that are facing right to the sun, really smart. Matt, uh, I wanted to talk to you today though, about kind of the crazy weather we had and, and how the house fared, how you fared, what we might do differently in light of that, knowing that you're building a brand new house. I mean, it was what, how many degrees out a week ago today? Yeah, five degrees or something. Yeah, and you're in a t-shirt today. Yeah, I could it, take this off. It's it, beautiful. It was a good test for us to kind of see what it was like before we made all the finishing touches in here. So, Matt, the other thing I want to mention up here is I love your silver gavel and roof. What's the story behind that? So I actually want to do rainwater collection here. Ooh. So I don't think I've told you that. No. But I, I like am a nerd about like, I think collecting rainwater is so cool. Super cool. So I want to do that. Uh, so I wanted a metal roof. Um, and also, I know that the silver is really good for reflecting some of the sun. Right. Very efficient, plus it's going to last a long time. So more expensive, but better financially overall in the long run. Yeah, and the other thing I like about metal roofs like this, and I'm doing metal at my house too, is hail resistance. Yeah, you true. know, if you had a comp shingle roof, that hail just absolutely crushes Fair it every enough. time. That metal roof, maybe you'll get a little uh, of uh, a ding on there, but most of the time you won't, especially if you use the 24 gauge. So that was a great call, man. Let's go check out the house. Let's do it. Well, uh, first off, I mean, you know, we put the zip R on there. Yeah. That was that was Matt Reisinger's idea, and it wasn't really, it, I mean, primarily it wasn't for freeze protection. It was just to help make your cost, your monthly cost of heating and cooling a lot better. Yeah, you know, whenever but, we do anything for freezing, we're helping in air conditioning too, right? For sure. Insulation yeah. works both ways. Right. So it's also going to really help in wall pipes from freezing, but that wasn't the primary reason we we decided to use that. Yeah, our delta most of the time between inside and outside temperature, we're, we always get to 100. You know, most July days, it's gonna hit 100. Yep. So, you know, if you cool your house to 70, it's like a 30 degree delta. But when it's five degrees out and you're trying to get to 65 degrees in your house, it's a 60 degree delta. That's big. <laughs> and you know, the Northern viewers are used to that. We're not used to right. that. But insulation works both ways. So by you, Matt, having a two by six wall, with zip R on the outside, and then you're gonna do what kind of insulation on the inside? It's all spray foam. Okay, and you'll fill that whole cavity up with five and a half inches. Yep. You're gonna be twice as insulated as most houses in this neighborhood, I would guess, or most new houses built in Texas. Yeah. And you'll be basically double code too, which is fantastic. I love that. I always 
am double safe. You know, that's, <laughs> that's pretty much my motto. Speaking of which, Matt, I bought you a little gift and I didn't know if you were going to use um, what's common up north. Uh, which is often referred to as frost pr frost proof hose bibs um, or freeze proof hose bibs. <laughs> Sorry, I got the camera on. <laughs> but this is pretty common in the north, uh, and most Texans don't know what this is. This, I've never seen one. You never seen one before? Never. So, pretty awful sound. But what's happening is, is when I turn this handle here, the shutoff is not here, it's back here in the wall, and it's going to be hard to see with this light. But this is now shutting off well into the wall. This is probably an eight inch model. And we don't use these commonly in Texas. What's common in Texas is this right here, which is on my house and probably your house. Mm -hmm. Just a regular old hose bib. There's a copper line or something else that comes into the back. And then there's a little ball valve right there that you can see moving right there. And so the water shuts off, uh, you know, what three quarters of an inch past where your hose screws on. Right. So this brass gets whatever temperature the outside is, yep. which for us in Texas, most of the time we put one of those bubble covers on right. and it bubbles over there. And for years we've used those without problem. But in a five degree frost uh, for multiple days, a lot of people's hoses froze up. I fixed a couple neighbors with shark bite caps until they could have a plumber come and fix them correctly. Yep. There's a cooler version of these that I've used before, which I'm, I brought you a couple, I brought you seven or eight. This is by Aquar, and this is a four inch version, which is kind of perfect for Texas. So now your zip R will be here, your spray film insulation will be here, actually kind of this depth, and this one's gonna shut off here. And the cool thing about this one, actually, let me grab the cap cover for this too. Here's a stainless cover. This is what it'll look like on the wall. And to use your hose bib, you'll pop this on and turn that in. And now it's gonna turn into a hose bib so that this, when you rotate it, turns it on. And then this right here is your, um, what do they call that? Your uh, vacuum breaker. So when you shut this off, a little bit of water will spill out of here as it breaks the vacuum and the water will come out mm -hmm. and kind of spill. So I brought you some of these so you could use these and this will make you a lot more uh, frost proof. And where, where you still have zip exposed, I also brought you a couple of these. These are a specialty flashing that I like that looks just like what the roofers would use. This is called Quick Flash and this is the P50 one. And all this is doing is this is just a uh, EPDM gasket, just like the roofers are gonna put on your pipes. And now that's gonna gasket around there. But let's take a look at Matt at what you've got for outside water on the outside of your house. And I also wanted to talk to you about your water heaters. Okay, let's do it. So should we start in the kitchen? Yep, we got one that? in there. There's also one back in that end of the house and then that other one you saw. Okay, so I'm guessing these are uh, lines coming maybe to kitchen sink? Yes, correct. On this corner, that's mm -hmm. cool. Man, yeah, so there'll you? be a kitchen sink here and then there's gonna be one on the island as well. Gotcha. So then this is what northerners are gonna object to and say, wait a minute, and why saw, would you put that? I saw a ton of those comments. People are saying, why would you put pipes, water pipes in your exterior walls? Yeah. But Which that's how all houses would, are here. In, in Texas, no big deal. And you can see your plumber's done a good job insulating these. Mm -hmm. And you've got zip bar behind there. But also, he's put them in the middle depth of the cavity, so you'll still have insulation behind. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that I like about this, Matt, is this is PEX piping that your plumber used. I've used a lot of PEX over the last probably 20 years. And PEX, if it freezes, it can expand without breaking. Right. The place that it's vulnerable is where it takes, let's say, a 90 degree corner and you've got a plastic fitting uh, or a 90 there. But what I'm noticing here that I really like seeing that, good job to your plumber, he put this bend support in. So the pipe is continuous coming from here and out of the wall. There's not a 90 there. So even if this pipe were to freeze, it wouldn't bust. All right. We didn't, add, we didn't add that weak spot to it. We didn't add a weak spot, exactly. So even if you had no power at this house, for a week and this wall got to be 32 degrees, which is unlikely, but could happen. These won't burst on you because they could freeze and expand. And then once they warm up, they can And track. they're also gonna be buried in spray foam as well. Exactly. So these are good to go. The one thing though that I do wanna mention is Matt, at my, up in Austin where I am, at my house, I put an exterior tankless water heater on my mm -hmm. house. Uh, and mine froze one night early on and I had to get a hairdryer out to unfreeze the PEX pipes into it. Mm -hmm. But the unit itself, which has a big copper boiler, uh, has a heating element in there, so that won't freeze. But as you know, we lost power uh, at my house for 52 hours. 
some of my clients lost power for six, even seven days last week during the freeze. Jeez. And as a result, I didn't think forward enough to say, hey, you should drain your tankless water heater of all right. the water. So we busted at least seven tankless water heaters that I know of. Yep. What are you guys doing here for, uh, for heating? So water heating? we also have tankless water heaters. They are not external ones like okay. you talked about. So this is the backside of one of them. Got it. And that is an exterior wall. Okay, so this is a recessed tankless, which looks awesome, but you do have one vulnerability here, I would say, Matt. If power goes out and this unit has a problem, if it leaked, it would leak into your wall cavity and would be coming down in here. Right. So two things I would say. Number one, um, make sure that the pipes that come out of your wall cavity here and are actually exposed to the cold, run heat tape on those. Mm -hmm. And number two, be really cautious about uh, losing power because if you lose power out here to this unit, all the copper, which is kind of up here in this top section, could be vulnerable to freezing. So you, you might think about a backup generator for the house, even a small one, just to make sure all these guys are kept warm and yep. maybe run one of your furnaces. Or what are you doing for heat? Are you using gas heat? Or are you using propane? I actually don't know. Okay, so I'm check sure. with your HVAC guy and find out. Yeah. If you're on propane or natural gas, you don't have natural gas up here. No, either. we don't have natural gas. I'm not sure if it's propane or if it's just electric. Okay, no. so if it's propane, remember propane works great without electricity, but your fan won't blow. Right. So that means your furnace is knocked out without a, without a uh, backup generator. And if you're on a heat pump, same thing. It's not going to run if you have no electricity. Yep. And heat pumps have gotten a lot better over the years. So don't be concerned if you have a heat pump. That's actually what I'm doing in my house. I don't have any natural gas at my new house, but I am putting a backup generator in. So I'll have heat. And the newer heat pumps, some of them will still make full heat at minus 5 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Jeez. So the technology is way better. And they also bring hot air. You know, when I was a kid growing up in, in the Northeast, uh, if you had a heat pump in the wintertime, usually it felt cold because the air coming out was like 90 degrees. Right. And it would warm your house up, but 90 feels cold to our 98.6 skin. Right. And today heat pumps are pumping out 110, 115 degrees. So it feels like hair dryer hot coming out. So no big deal. Cool. Any other, uh, any other disaster mitigation you've thought about for the house after going through this week? <laughs> no, not really. Luckily, we don't have any water in these pipes yet, so we didn't have to test anything yet. Oh, that's great. Um, all our water is still at the still well, not, not piped in. Yeah. Oh, that was good. So nothing, nothing bad up here. And how about your houses, your properties, the bunker? How'd you guys do? The bunker blew a big pipe on the well, so we didn't have any way to pump water into our tank. Mm. Um, we got that fixed the next day. What kind of pipe was that, just out of curiosity? It was a big PVC pipe. PVC, okay. Yeah, it was like a, it was an inch and a quarter PVC it pipe. It shattered like glass. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, big old hole there. Yep. And then uh, my house, just, just yard water pipes broke, little one inch pipes, so not easy bad. to fix, yeah. Yeah, not bad. And I had all the parts in the barn. because It's funny, PVC is really very shatter. Yeah. It's easy to shatter in yep. cold weather. PEX won't have that problem in your house. Though. Yeah, that's really cool. I was, I was wondering if PEX would. I, I didn't know that it kind of expanded and contract like that. That's mm -hmm. interesting to know. Yeah, it's much more flexible and has that ability to expand and contract without right. breaking. So it's really, like I said earlier, it's just those fittings you need to worry about. Yeah. Would you guys consider a backup generator for the house after being out for a couple days? For sure, for sure. Yeah, that that is something I kind of have a little bit of prepper in me, and I, so I think it's really cool anyway. <laughs> and so, yeah, I, I've thought about that as well. And have to figure out where we'd put it and how, how big we'd go on that thing. I don't know much about them. And do you have a propane tank already out here? We don't still... yet, but we're going to. Okay. Yeah. You probably can bury it in this backyard. Yeah. Considering we'll how much fill you have going Plenty of room back there. <laughs> yeah, so get a big enough one, because remember, if you get a, a larger size generator, mm -hmm. some of them can use four or five gallons of propane an hour. Wow. And if you're out for a week, you know, if you had a smaller yeah. tank, you could blow through your tank. Yeah. So think about a bigger size tank, too, okay. if, you, if you're going propane. Cool. Um, Matt, when was the last time on Off the Ranch you had a good update on the house? It's been pretty recently, right? Yeah, it was uh, a week or two ago, yeah. What's, uh, just out of curiosity, since I saw you, gosh, I met you originally a year ago, right? Probably. When you started this? Yeah, because you came when we had just like started knocking boards out of windows, I think. I, that's right, I think that's right. Yeah, we just like opened them up so we actually had light coming in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the first time that you came up here. And, and I'm curious on schedule, where you thought you'd be compared to where you are today. So I totally thought it would take a year to do this. So we, we're, we've had it for actually a little over a year now, <laughs> but probably about a year since we really started working on it. And it still looks like this, obviously. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, but we also, 
in that year decided to go a lot bigger with it. So yeah. we decided to add a four car garage with an apartment instead of just a little, you know, two car efficiency yeah. kind of garage. And we decided to make the backyard a lot bigger and bring a bunch of dirt in and that kind of stuff. And so we've, we've upped the ante a bit, but yeah. it's, it's definitely, we were behind where I thought I would be a year ago, for sure. <laughs> for the builders watching this, I know you're laughing like I am because, you know, you've watched Matt and this is a giant project and you've never built a house before, right? No, I've only done like simple home renovations. That's it. Yeah. And this is not a simple home renovation. <laughs> I mean, this was like a forensics job at first. And then uh, funny enough, like my wife and I bought my project. Uh, these guys on my channel have been seeing me do this real rebuild, mm -hmm. which is my yep. personal house that I thought, oh, I'll do this as a rental. I'll sell it. I'll keep it. You know, and then I got fully invested with this is awesome. I've never built a house for myself before, just like you guys. Yep. And I'm having a blast, but I'm basically in the same stage of my house. I'm Are still you? not an installation either. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's easy to say, oh, why aren't you now done yet? Now it's a race. <laughs> I might win. You'll probably beat me. I might win. My house is a tad smaller. We're insulating uh, in a couple weeks, though. So I'm insulating in two weeks. Oh, so we might it. have a you're race. Totally gonna win. We'll see what happens, <laughs> guys. If you're not currently following Matt, he's got several good channels, but you can follow this. He's gone to the abandoned mansion on his off the ranch channel. And if you're not familiar with Demo Ranch too, I've got uh, I've got three boys <laughs> that are one's a teen and two are preteens that. I don't think, Matt, you publish anything without those guys watching it, probably within the first everything. hour or two <laughs> That's good. of Bellish Day. You've got a lot of fans out there. Appreciate the business. Thank you. In fact, quick plug for my boys. Uh, my boys started a YouTube channel oh, really? called Green Onion Gang. All right. Uh, you should go subscribe. Yeah. But I was talking on the phone with you this weekend as we were setting up uh, coming out today and, you know, what's going on with the freezing, blah, blah, blah. Will, my son, was in the car with me and you would have thought I was talking to the president. I'm trying to think of the biggest celebrity you can possibly think of. I mean, YouTube to them is the big game. They right. don't even watch TV. They don't Me watch either. Netflix. I don't yeah. really either. Yeah. And so the fact that I was calling you, that I had your cell number, my son was just like struck. Like he couldn't say anything, but I was on the phone with you because <laughs> yep. that's all they watch. Don't tell them YouTube. I'm just some dumb redneck from Texas. Yeah, don't tell my subscribers that I'm just a dumb builder in Austin too. They put a bunch of... <laughs> exterior tankless units on that are frozen up on my clients. <laughs> We're all learning in here together. And it's one of the things I love about YouTube is there's really fun content, no matter what you're interested in. Guys, go follow Off The Ranch. I'll put a link to, uh, to Off The Ranch and to Demo Ranch, Matt's two big channels. He also runs a Vet Ranch. He's got a lot of great content. Matt, so fun to hang out with you, man. Good Thanks, to see man. your project. Appreciate it. Thank you It's looking really good around here, man. Hopefully soon enough, it'll look even better. It won't be long, won't be long. And if you're not currently a subscriber, guys, we've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. <laughs> <laughs>